Hello and welcome! So today we're gonna talk about PvPing in 3.14. We're gonna talk about tactics, special items such as EMPs, missiles, etc. And about everything pretty much. So stay tuned and let's cut straight to the chase. Hello, my name is Grumpy. Alright, so first I should make a disclaimer here. A lot of stuff that I'm gonna say here I've already said in a bunch of my videos, so if you do not understand why I've said all of those things and if you are not a subscriber, yeah, please subscribe, but yeah, uh, check out my older videos and you'll understand why I'm saying those things. Anyway, let's cut straight to the chase and talk about PvPing. So first off, we should talk about tactics. Okay, so main thing is of course gonna be the positioning of your ship. Positioning of your ship towards the enemy so you don't show the enemy your whole cross-section or positioning yourself so you can see the entirety of the enemy's cross-section. It takes a lot of time and practice to do this, but your best bet is just to try to stay behind them. As you can see, the target is much bigger if I'm attacking it from above. But if I go to the sides, uh, front side, left and right sides, the target, or the area where I can hit it at, is much smaller. And why is that important? Well, you will get into a situation where you cannot fire back at the enemy, and at that point your best bet or your best chance of survival is not to give the enemy your whole cross section, so try to position yourself and turn the ship or roll the ship around so he can't hit your top or bottom section of your ship, because it, it is the biggest cross section. The next thing is when you're attacking or when you're planning your first attack or even if you're trying to run away, try to attack from the sun's position or if you're running away, try to run away straight into the sun. Because as you can see from the video, you can pretty much hide inside the sunlight. The next thing is pretty much important as the first thing and is gonna be the environment you fight in. You need to choose your environment wisely. First off, check out if there are any asteroids next to you uh, so you don't hit them. And if so, try to pull out of the asteroid field so you can concentrate on PvPing. You also need to make sure that your target does not have any friends because in this patch it is really hard to deal with more than one target. So keep a lookout and try not to fight more than you can handle. And that goes both ways, cause if you have any friends, which you probably don't cause nobody likes you. But that could be just me, so if you do have any friends, make sure you call them to your aid, cause 2v1 is better than 1v1. And if you have a dual seater, such as a hurricane or anything with a turret basically, uh, just have your friend on the turret and you're gonna slap everybody and uh, yeah it takes no skill because the turrets have aimbots and a f uh, pretty much an infinite amount of ammo so uh, yeah that's the state of the game right now but if it's there and you can use it then I guess you should abuse it right but let's talk about the turrets for a second there are a few modes that you can set your turrets to which you should know by pressing Q you will go into the relative mode by pressing Q again you will cycle it and you will go back to the virtual joystick mode by pressing B you can cycle the staggered or unstaggered mode. The staggered mode basically just fires uh, one gun after the other. The unstaggered mode is like they all fire at the same time. That, that's pretty much it. You can use the enhanced stick precision mode if you're a joystick player and the gyro mode is actually pretty good. Uh, so basically if your ship turns or if your pilot turns your ship, if you go into the gyro mode, your turret is gonna move independently from the ship. Now let's talk about tactics a bit more. The main thing you need to know when you're engaging another player, so if you're PvPing, is that you need to know your advantages or your ship's advantages. So basically, if you're fighting against a bigger ship, so if you're in a light fighter or uh, in a medium fighter, or you're fighting against a heavy fighter or a subcapital ship, your advantage is gonna be your maneuverability. 
because you're not gonna have the shield strength, the hull strength or anything that the other ship has. But if for example you're in a heavy fighter and you're fighting a smaller fighter, the main advantage you will have over this small fighter is of course your shield and uh, hull HP and of course your main armament because your guns are gonna be bigger and they're gonna deal more damage than the guns on the smaller ships. Now with all that said, let's talk about the flight mechanics. Yeah, I know you wanna talk about components but Trust me, this is more important. First thing that you need to know is that all the ships have a maximum amount of thrust that they are able to produce. So for example, if you're flying in the coupled mode, every time you stop applying thrust to a certain direction, your ship is gonna try to slow down and come to a standstill, which of course requires some thrust. So if you're trying to maneuver while your ship is trying to stop, your maneuvering thrusters are not gonna be able to produce as much thrust as you need to turn around. So if you're turning while you're stopping, at least try not to press any other keys while you're turning so you can turn faster or you can switch to decoupled mode which will help you a lot because in decoupled mode your ship is not trying to stop every time you stop pressing keys on your keyboard that of course also goes for the joystick players now when you're engaging in any fight it doesn't even matter if it's pvp or not you need to stay around the SCM speed. It is clearly marked on the left side of your HUD uh, by the green and the red zones that are on the velocity meter. So while you're in the green zone, you will be at the SCM speeds. If you go above and you go into the red zone, your main thruster, so your forward thruster, is gonna overpower all the maneuvering thrusters. So basically you will not be able to maneuver as good as you will be able to maneuver if you're inside the SCM speeds. And I've seen a lot of players do this and uh, we call it jousting because uh, you will not be able to stop and turn with the enemy and you will just joust with them and like in the end nobody will die because your shields are gonna regenerate every time you joust and yeah everybody's gonna hate you for doing that. But the only time that you should actually joust and when I advise you to joust is when you're fighting more than one guy or you're certain that one salvo from your guns is gonna end the other player's life. So that would be called booming and zooming or boom and zoom. And that's a legit tactic, but like use it only if you are certain that you can kill the enemy in one pass. Now, as I have already said, you need to know the advantages of your ship over the other player's ship, but there's more. You should also know the characteristics of your own ship. And I'm saying this because I saw a lot of players uh, that are playing with like keyboard and mouse, and they are just using the mouse to turn around without like utilizing the Q and E keys. Uh, guys, you can you can roll, and that's the thing because your pitch rate is much faster than the yaw rate. So just just like roll into the enemy and pitch upwards, and that's it. It's gonna be faster. And if you check Urkel.games, you will see that some of the ships have the same pitch and yaw rates, but like that is not a thing. Test it out, and you will see. Now, one more thing that you can do is set up some additional controls that are actually not set in the game by default. Uh, I already have a video about this, but uh, you guys are not gonna watch it because you're lazy. I know you, so I'm gonna talk about it now. And make sure you leave a subscribe, come on. Okay, so because I couldn't be bothered to record it again, uh, we're watching the video from uh, 3.13, and here you can see the default virtual joystick settings. And they are not as good as you can make them be. So basically, if you go into the options and into the game settings, and scroll all the way down to Pilot VJoy, and pull the range pitch and range yaw sliders all the way down, and you will get this. And as you can see, it is much snappier now, and you will be able to turn your ship and get your guns on the target much faster. Now the next thing that you can change in the game settings is gonna be the PAP reticle and you can change it to be lead or lag. So basically what that will do is your PAP is gonna be slave to you instead of being slave to the other guy. The next thing that you can do if you want to be a bit more precise and if there's somebody like uh, Pip wiggling you can counter that 
that by switching your flight mode to relative mode. Yes, you can do it in the ship and you can do it over here in the flight and movement under the key bindings and uh, find the cycle mouse mode from VJoy to relative and just set up a key bind for it, uh, whichever you wish I have on my mouse. So yeah, the last thing that you can do is set your key binds for the G-Force safety on and off. So basically this will give you a higher uh, turning rate and uh, yeah, you will need to combat the G-forces and G-locks because you're eventually gonna black out if you don't have the safety on. So uh, yeah, just uh, don't push on the stick that hard or pull on the stick that hard and you'll be fine. Uh, so yeah, there's something for you joystick players, but the keyboard and mouse players can also prosper from this. I have it bound to F3, but uh, don't listen to me or other YouTubers, just find the keybinds you actually like. But you probably came here to see the best components, right? But I gotta be honest with you, uh, there are no best components anymore. Uh, everything is pretty much a placeholder right now and everything has pretty much the same stats. So all of the things that I've said in the past 10 minutes are much more important than the components that you're using. So my advice to you would be to go to oracle.games and just see if your components like the coolers and your power plants can sustain the shields and the repeaters or cannons or whatever you're using. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about the weapons. First off, I still see that people are using the C788 cannons. Uh, they just don't realize that they have been completely fucking nerfed and they are completely useless now. They deal less damage than uh, a size 1 repeater, so don't use those cannons, please. But when we're talking about the loadouts, the basic theme of this patch is like more is more. More weapons is, is gonna deal more damage. So if you have a Hornet, forget about the size 4 on top, just get two size 2s on top uh, and two size 1s instead of a size 3 on the nose and uh, you're gonna be golden because uh, that's gonna deal more damage, you're gonna have a higher DPS than just having a size 4 and a size 3 on the nose. But let's talk about the cannons versus repeaters. I already talked about all this in my previous videos, but like the basics are, or the gist of it is that you should only use the cannons if you're going against bigger targets. So if you're going against something that is not a fighter, so Andromedas, Freelancers, or a subcapital sized ships. If you want to use the cannons to fight other fighters, you're not going to have a lot of fun because the velocity of the rounds on the cannons is much lower or they are just much slower than the repeaters. So in other words, you're not going to hit shit if the other fighter turns. So yeah, use them only if you have to, if, you, if you're already stuck with that loadout. And if you have those, try to boom and zoom or force jousting and everybody's going to hate you and nothing is going to happen, nobody's going to die and just like jump away because uh, you're going to be useless in a in a pvp fight and you probably saw that the ballistics are pretty much overpowered right now uh, yes they are they are balanced by having pretty much no ammo but i would advise not to use a complete ballistics build because of a few reasons First off, PvP environment is much different than the PvE environment because the PvP players, uh, maybe they, they don't want to shoot you, maybe they don't want to fight and they're just going to jump away and you're going to chase them like most bounties do and you're going to shoot them up a bit and then they're going to jump away and you're going to chase them and you're going to shoot them up a bit and after some time you're going to lose all the ammo and uh, that's not the way to go. That only works when the other player is committed to killing you, if not, you're just going to waste your ammo. Now that being said, the best loadout is actually using a combined loadout with ballistics and laser repeaters. Just try not to use the distortions because they have been nerfed and like they're, they're completely obsolete right now. Now if you're using a combined loadout and if let's say you're using a ballistic repeater or a Gatling gun or whatever, the main advice I have for you guys is not to use the ballistics until you're sure that the shields are down and then you can use the ballistics as a finisher. So so either have the ballistics on another fire group or shut them down until you're ready to fire them. 
And you're probably thinking, well, like, Grumpy, why should I do that? I'm just gonna lose my firepower if I have my weapons shut down. Well, yes and no. You will lose some DPS because you will have less guns. So, for example, if you're using two size one Gatlings on your Hornets and you have four more laser repeaters, those laser repeaters are gonna have the same maximum damage potential or the same damage output as you had with six laser repeaters. You will have less DPS, yes, but you're gonna have more rounds in the energy weapons, so that's gonna be give or take the same thing, of course, if you can manage to stay on target for that long. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, well, yeah, that's great, but like, I'm surely not gonna hop into the MFDs while I'm in a dogfight and just like uh, try to enable my guns. Uh, yes, of course not. You can just press P twice and uh, that's gonna enable your weapons, because P, when you press it once, it disables the weapons when you press it again it's going to enable all the weapons and that will be the fastest way to do it now let's talk about the special items so let's talk about the missiles first i have already done a video about all the missile sizes so yeah make sure you check it out uh, basically tldr is that uh size ones are the best ones so yeah just use them the only other thing that you should know is that you can fire them at like a 90 degree angle so if you don't have a track ir you can just hold z and move your mouse around and aim it at the target. It is pretty good to keep a constant pressure on the enemy. The next special item would be the EMPs. I really like them, they are really good in this patch and I think you should use them. Of course I already did a video about them but yeah, the, the gist of it is uh, they are pretty good because like uh, size 4 EMPs on the Sentinel and the Warlock can completely disable the shields on the uh, enemy fighters if they are size 1s and they will be left with like 5% shields on their ship. Of course, if their shields are already down, you're just gonna turn their ship off. Now, we have tested all the EMPs uh, a couple of days ago and uh, we realized that the Sentinels and the Warlocks EMP range is 950 meters, while the Hawks maximum range is 900 meters. And there is no damage drop-off. You can be close, you can be far, there is no damage drop-off. Now, the last thing I want to touch upon in this video is gonna be the most important thing, and that's the power triangle. Now, most people don't even know how to use it, so they just keep it in the center, but that's not the way you're supposed to do it. You are supposed to use it more often. Now, firstly, there is a huge misconception in the uh, community. People think that if you divert your power to the weapons, they are gonna deal more damage or that they are gonna fire faster, which is simply not the case. The only thing that you actually get with diverting power to the weapons is a faster recharge rate and a higher ammo capacity, but that's it. Now, shields, on the other hand, if you divert your power to them, you're of course gonna get a faster recharge rate, but you will also harden them. Now, why is that important? Well, I've seen a lot of players and YouTubers uh, keeping the power on the weapons while they're engaging, and they should be keeping the power diverted to the shields. Why is that? Because every time you engage somebody, the enemy is probably engaging you too. So when you're making a pass on the enemy and he's firing at you, you should be hardening your shields. And if we're talking about the power triangle, we should be talking also about the thrusters. And uh, the only advice here is to try to keep the boost at at least 25% at all times, uh, just so you can bail if you need to. And the last overall advice that I can give you is to practice. Uh, just practice, practice and practice, because practice makes perfect, right? So just get a friend and jump outside the comma ray area so you don't get a crime stat and just practice, shoot each other until somebody dies and that's it and that is it for today guys thank you for watching thank you for subscribing and don't forget to bring a towel when you're traveling through space and uh ta -ta -da -da -ta. if you wanna be a much much better pvp or baby you should subscribe 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 <laughs> yeah the ta -da -ta -da -ta. Thank you. Bye.